Welcome, everyone. We're the Goofy Historians, and this is a humorous history podcast. Um, just a reminder, we're not diagnosing anybody in this video. We're only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy the video, please like it, hit subscribe, and consider supporting us on Patreon. We'll put the link to Patreon in the description of this video. Today, we're going to get started and talk about Egypt. Um, my co-host recently returned from Egypt, so he probably has some on the street knowledge of what's going on in Egypt now. But what we're gonna do is start from the very beginning of uh, of time. We're gonna talk about when there was dinosaurs in Egypt. No, not really. Um, <laughs> but we are gonna talk about ancient, ancient Egypt, I guess the beginning of the pharaohs, the old kingdom, and that's the good stuff where they had the pyramids. So Joseph, where, is in Egypt, you want to get started. There was like an upper Egypt and a lower Egypt before there was one Egypt. Is that true? Yeah, I'd like to I'd like to start, I'd like to end this at the beginning of the uh, the old kingdom. I want to say how we got to it because that's important. There was obviously once there was the lower kingdom and the upper kingdom and they united. But before that, I just want to give some background. Humans, Homo uh, hominoids have been in Egypt for over 600,000 years, which is like six millenniums, right? It's, it's a long time. Those were not Homo sapiens. They were like Homo erectus, and they were in Egypt for 500,000 years and didn't accomplish anything. They have, they have one tool, the hand axe, for 500,000 years, and that was it. Uh, no, no progress was, but they were happy, right? And one thing about Egypt 700,000 years ago, it was green. It was, the whole Egypt was green. All of North Africa was green. There was gazelles and zebras and everything. There was a dramatic climate change that happened about 70,000, 100,000 years BC where everything started to dry out. And that's when the uh, Neanderthal man showed up. He shows up about 70,000 years ago, and he's talking to like the Homo erectus who's there before, right? And he's saying, you know, the stone ax, you know, you, we got to get going on this. So they made like scrapers, they had like a little industrial revolution going with the Neanderthal, and Neanderthal started burying their dead, they started making little pot things going on. Um, so they sort of took over the scene. That was 70,000 years ago. And then, and then again, nothing else happened. I mean, Neanderthals. And, and one thing about this time, nobody lived over 30 years old, right? You were probably dead by the time you're 25. This was like, if you were back at this time, it was like living on a college campus without any professors, right? Everybody was between 20 and 30 without the actual campus. Right? So... And it, but everybody was happy. There was, there was no reason to uh, no no reason to progress. So, okay. So prior to the Neanderthals, um, like um, Homo erectus or whatever was running around, and he had a hand axe. That was it. That's all he had for all that time. Did he? Um, and it was the Garden of Eden. But he only lived to like twenty five. Yeah, um, he probably right. had fire toward the end of that. Neanderthal brought fire. Oh, okay. So, All right, so go ahead. So with Neanderthal. Neanderthal showed up. He said, he said, he said, he said uh, come on. Because, well, you know, the Hormos Erectus was our the whole time. Man. All they were doing was chasing and copulating. But Neanderthal shows up and says, we got fire. We're going to start burying our dead. And that's one of the first indication of mummification, right? Because they're putting their, they're not just, dying now they're dying and they're putting people in little sand pits and that was covering it up and it got dug up by uh by wild animals right but you know it was it was a start and then about ten thousand years ago or so um it was homo sapiens sapiens show up they're like the last ones on the scene right and when they come there was this whole rep they they got they got the bow and arrow. They got the sickle. 
they got um, they got uh, the spear. They started getting arrowheads, little arrowheads, like shooting birds and stuff. Um, they they got fire. They were cooking. They got pottery, which is huge, right? And all this pottery, they started um, they started putting little symbols on it, not, not, not writing, but they were like putting like water symbols and they were like making little edges and stuff. So they were doing something more than just running around with a hand axe trying to chase down a gazelle, right? Uh, for one reason, life was a lot more difficult then. Egypt was drying up. So they were getting more concentration of people around the Nile when you just couldn't go out to the savannah and, and take down a giraffe or something. So they're concentrating now along the Nile and they're creating these, they're, they're getting little groups of 25 to 30 people at the time. And at this time, in all of Egypt, there was like 2,000 homo sapiens around, around the base, but they, they survived and they became sophisticated enough to start increasing their, their populations into like little clans of 100 or something. And they started specializing. They special, some people made pots, some people made, you know, uh, bow and arrows or arrowheads. And because of this, people started accidentally living longer, right? Because they weren't out chasing gazelles. So they, they invented some type of agriculture, right? With their little sickle, they were going around. So they had, they had crops, right? And when you have crops in that, people live longer. And all of a sudden, from a population that used to be dead by 30, right? If you're lucky, you know, the people who are doing the more domestic things, they're living to 40 and 50, right? And so you can live your life with like, you can know your grandfather, probably your great grandfather. Like these people have been around ever since you've been alive and probably will continue after you're dead because they're more of a select group of people. So I think that was like the beginning of thinking of like, these people have been here forever. Are they immortal? Are these, this king going to be here for the next generation? So I think they started getting the idea that these people are going to live forever because, you know, like your grandpa, right? He was like 98, right? It's like, he was here forever. Yeah, um, you know what? It's like they hacked ev evolution at that point. Because like I was saying, evolution doesn't have any need for people past their reproductive age, right? You know, except for maybe grandparents that can help take care of the younger kids and stuff. But, you know, people yeah, living I, I older, think, that's think, just, yeah. you, you know what I mean by that? Yeah, because, I mean, it's, it's, it's like it's like a uh, a lover, right? You get one person or one group of people who can make it past 40, right? Not only are they living past 40 now, they can take care of the grandkids, right? They can depart, you know, it says, oh, you know, that gazelle over there, leave him alone. He's, he's, he's a, mean, a mean son of a bitch. But so, you know, whatever wisdom they've accomplished, right, isn't, doesn't disappear, right, when they're 30, right? And they can go on to the next group of people who are 30 and the next group of people who are 30. And you start, you know, now you have leisure to go ahead and make, uh, make uh, pottery, right? And they actually actually started art, right? And oh, one of the things they made these uh, Homo sapiens sapiens just to show how cool they were. They were making art, but they also made makeup, right? They were they, they had these little pallets where they ground um, uh, mud and charcoal from the fire, and they had like little coloring from some of the stones, and they were like putting makeup on their face, right? So they were into being beautiful. This was like the first, it wasn't just being alive, it was being alive and looking good, you know? And even then, you know, people, most people were 20 to 30. So these were, if you looked at the, the pyramid drawings today, these were beautiful people. So it was a very nice life. And it was a life they wanted to continue, right? Um, as long as they could. Nobody's really suffering today. It's not like, you know, the Homo erectus where they're just, they're all like with their little hand axe running around. I mean, how much can you hunt with a hand axe? But with a bow and arrow, you know, in a sickle, life becomes a lot easier. Um, 
Yeah, so I think so, that, if I could chime in, I think that's why, in some ways, it was built into the Egyptian DNA that um, at, they got to some point and change was not something that they were excited about because they, they wanted to just um, be, you know, consistent. And, and that carried on all through, um, you know, once it got started all through the, the other dynasties, like change wasn't something they really strive. The artwork was the same for hundreds of years. The, they they looked the same. They wore the same clothes, if you believe the pictographs and stuff. So Whatever I think from even at that, that yeah. early time, they were like, really, let's let's keep this going. Yeah, and well, uh, the Neanderthals are the ones who invented like a scraper right so when you hunt something down you just didn't like take its skin and wear it you, you, you scraped off the you know the, the meat and, and, and the skin and then you can make actually leather so the neanderthals came up with with with, with leather right? um so that was a great advantage so it went back so it's not like humans showed up and there was nothing there there were people they had been actual hominids, they, they looked almost like us for 700 years before that. And then I'm sure they built on what the Neanderthals had. And who, and then who knows what happened to the Neanderthals? Maybe they just intermarried with the Homo sapiens, right? But put the pool, pool the two, because the, because the Neanderthals disappeared at that time. Um, and there was only Homo sapiens, us, to, to, to build on, to build on what's left. Um, and remember, I, 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 in, in the Bible, right, it's at this time, which is about the same, same time as this is happening. In the Bible, the Old Testament begins about 4,000 4, BC, right? So they didn't, the Bible didn't know anything about the Neanderthals or the Homo erectus, right? But they're right about Homo sapiens. That's about the time the Homo sapiens show up in doing doing something substantial. Homo sapiens actually go back 100,000 years or 200,000 years, but in terms of them becoming civilized, it kind of coincides with what the Bible says about 4,000 years old. But the Bible says people are living like 800 years old, <laughs> living to be 800 years old, right? Uh, the Bible, says, just because the Bible they, says he lived to be 1,200 years old because he didn't have... But I, Something. Yeah. Yeah, they had better vitamins back then. But I think it's because the people writing the Bible just, just um, misplaced the decimal point. They go, was that 800 or where do we put the decimal point? Right? It's, oh, yeah. It was, it was, it was <laughs> or, or maybe they didn't understand decimal points and the guy meant to say 80 and he wrote 800. Who knows? Keeping track of all those birthdays. But after. Homo sapiens came on, they, they settled down, they started getting longer and bigger and bigger groups of people together, and they started living longer, right? So that's what I mean. They they not only invented all of these old things, right? They not only invented like um, you know, the bow and arrow, uh, pottery, art, the palette, makeup, agriculture, they invented old age, right? Because Wait, before, hold on. Hold on, stop Ooh. the presses. Stop the presses. I gotta quote this. Okay, so let me write this down. So the Egyptians invented old age. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, thank. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, because that was they weren't the first ones to actually do that, right? Because one thing Egypt doesn't have, right, is a flood story. Because they don't need a flood study. The, the, the Nile floods every year. <laughs> you know, uh, unlike, you know, the, the Euphrates and the Tigris, you get these huge floods, like, you know, once every hundred years or something, or, you know, the, the you know, the, the Indus or the Ganges, you know, or the uh, Yellow River, the Yangtze. All these, all civilizations are based on river valley systems. You know, they're all based on their rivers. And once you get a river, you have occasional flooding, right? So everybody once in a while is going to get a big flood, so everybody has a big flood store. But the Nile was very dependable. It didn't like flood randomly. It, it, 
flooded systematically every year, which, which created all this fertile soil. So they never needed a flood store. So they had another creation mix, with this, which is we'll talk about in another one. But because people are growing older, you can get kings, right? You can get people who are wise, people who know what are going on, right? And when they started getting kings, it's like Egypt, Upper Egypt is actually lower on the map, right? Because that's where the, the, the Nile is higher than, and then it flows south. It fl actually flows north. The Nile is one of the only few major rivers in the world that flows north, right? Most, you know, like the Mississippi and all those rivers, they don't mainly flow south. This is one that flows north, so it's kind of backwards on the map. But when they started developing, it started to develop into two spots, two, the lower Egypt and upper Egypt. Um, so it, Egypt started then with the few, few dynasties, the first kings, and there were no pyramids back then. They were still burying their people in these little, in the sand and hope and seeing that they, they self, self mummification is, is kind of what happened. Um, but at some point, a, there was a kingdom of the of, of there was a kingdom of Lower Egypt and the kingdom of Upper Egypt, Upper Egypt, Lower Egypt, and one of the kings of Lower Egypt was really jealous because the Lower Kingdom had a, a crown which was kind of ugly and ridiculous. It was like a big phallic symbol on top of his head. It was white and looked like you know a, a cook's hat or something. And like a cone hat. Lower Egypt. It they looked had, like they, had cone cone it looked like they were cone. they were competing cone heads. <laughs> they they were competing. So there was this crown competition, and Lower Egypt had this really cool crown, right? It was a crown that had like this this thing sticking up in the back, like it like a feathers and stuff, and another little thing in front, and it was smaller. And so, um, Norm or Normer. Uh, says I, I want I want that crown. That's a cool crown. And his mom says, "Well, you can't because you have your crown." So what he said is, "I'm going to go down and steal that crown." And he did. He went down and he stole that crown, and he became the the uh, pharaoh of both Upper and Lower Egypt. And his mom says, "Well, you still got to keep our crown because that's our heritage." And he says, "Okay, I'm just going to combine the two." And he put the new crown on, on top of the old crown. And that was how Egypt, the United Egypt, began with, with, with one king who they call a pharaoh by this point, controlling upper and lower Egypt. And we can talk about Narmer or Norn, if you want to call him. Um, All right, so Norm, let me get this straight. So the first uh, pharaoh yeah, of Egypt and, was a guy and, and, named Norm who liked headwear. Okay, I got it. He liked headwear. <laughs> that was the main thing. And he lived a long time. And it, so that dynasty, the first, the first, the first of the old kingdom, right? That's what they call the old kingdom, right? There's going to be old kingdom, a middle kingdom, and there's going to be a new kingdom. Of course, Norm didn't call it the old kingdom because for him it was new, right? That would be silly. Um, but he called it, we call it the old kingdom. But he's so, and the old kingdom ends with this great pharaoh called Pepe II. And eventually, if he lives to be a hundred, right? So you can imagine if you're these peasants living to be 30 and you go generation after generation after generation after generation with the same pharaoh, these pharaohs, for all intents and purposes, are, the, are immortal. Right, they just live forever. And we can talk about Pepe and uh, Narmer in our second uh, episode, which will cover the actual Old Kingdom. But at least we've got up to Narmer, and that's where we should end today. Well, that's great. So we went from, from Norm, everybody loves Norm, to Pepe. And these guys just, um, they they were like the United States um, Congress, you know, like with Feinstein and and the guy. I mean, they, they just they just live forever. All right, well, that was great. Um, we're gonna keep going with our Egyptian series. Um, so be sure and hit subscribe so you don't 
miss any. Thank you for watching. Yeah, we're going to do more and more. There's a lot more to say about Nora.